Hey, how's it going everyone and welcome to my Resident Evil 3 Remake Speedrun Tutorial. So, the purpose of this video is to help you guys get in some of the achievements or trophies that are tied to the game. The achievements we're going to be going for are Sprinter, complete the game in under 2 hours of playtime. I might need these later, complete the game using one or fewer recovery items. A quick note on that achievement, the game does have one use of a healing item scripted into it, so you can't use a healing item wherever you feel like you do have to use one at a certain point. But again, I'll let you guys know about that when we get there. The minimalist achievement complete the game without opening the item box and sensational work which is complete the game with an s rank i've done guides on the resident evil games in the past and a lot of you seem to find them really useful so i hope this helps some of you out also if you want to see me do guides like this live come on over to my twitch channel at twitch.tv slash iframes you can find links to that in the description and pinned in the comment section as well thank you all very much for tuning into the video let's get this going Okay, so skipping these first initial cutscenes, there should be two there. You don't have to interact with the window in Jill's apartment, you can just head straight to the bathroom. We need to go and interact with the sink in here. To get through this first little intro, pretty straightforward intro to the game. And when Jill wakes up, we're going to do the same thing. Just head over to the bathroom. And we need to turn on the light switch just to the right of the sink. And then skip these cutscenes and head into the apartment go to the phone get this intro out of the way straightforward stuff another cutscene to skip when you gain control of Jill just run forward Nemi's coming fond of black bag cloven let's just keep going out the window in Jill's apartment. And you can get down these stairs faster just by pressing forward repeatedly. You can't sprint in this section of the game. You just pretty much move forward. Keep going. Out the exit door. And onto the fire escape. Again, we're just going to mash forward to go down the stairs faster. You don't have to do that. It saves you a little bit of time though. There is a technique in this game you can use to get downstairs faster when you've got a gun. But we don't have a gun right now, so... Again, just keep moving forward. Nemesis is not happy. That collateral damage. And once you gain control of Jill again, just head forward down the alleyway here until you get to Brad. Another cutscene to skip. And we're just following Brad for the moment. One fucked up thing always leads to another. Eventually, the game will allow you to sprint. I'm thinking they're probably going to have some sort of Ghost Survivors deal and Brad's going to be one of the people you get to play as. Oh, there we go, we can sprint now. So when you get up here, you're going to have another cutscene to skip. And we're just going to head immediately left. If you go fast enough, those zombies won't bother you. Into the bar, another cutscene to skip. Head around this alleyway corner to get the pistol. And uh, as soon as you gain control again after skipping that cutscene, just turn around and run away. You don't have to shoot that zombie. Save your bullets. I've probably mentioned this in the intro, but this difficulty has aim assist on. I've turned it off because I don't like to use it on mouse and keyboard. You might feel the same if you're on mouse and keyboard. If you're on controller, it might help you out a little bit. It's up to you whether you use it or not, but you'll have to go into the options to turn it off. So, entirely up to you. I think you'll see me do it in a little bit. <clears throat> Again. All of this stuff is really straightforward. This guy's going to lock himself in the back of this truck, but we're just going to keep moving. Yeah, yeah. Grab the ammo that's on the barrel right there and head out the door. Gain control of Jill again and uh, we're gonna crawl under this fence. You'll get a cutscene where you get kind of a jump scare from a zombie about here or so. Here we go. Skip that. And we're gonna run forward to the elevator. Throughout this run, you can use the dodge mechanic if you want to. I don't really use it a lot because I feel like it's based on timing. And I'd rather just show you guys really safe ways to get through. So here you can see me turning off my aim assist. 
Also, you can figure out where it is. Shoot this first zombie in the leg until his leg comes off. And then as soon as it does, just run over him and avoid the zombie that's on the right side and go to the elevator. You can dodge them if you want, like I said. But uh, I'm not going to use it that much. Just so this guide is nice and easy to follow. If you've followed my other guides in the past, you'll know sort of the format I do them in. I try to make them as easy to copy as possible. So we're starting up this car. And uh, slamming into Nemi. Have some of that. Follow the button prompts. Again, really straightforward stuff at the start heel. And once you drive off the building, you can skip the cutscene. So if you don't press anything, this cutscene will end a little bit quicker. Jill will start moving back on her own, but as soon as it zooms in on Nemi there, you can just uh, skip that cutscene. Alright, right, we're gonna have to go around. We gotta follow Carlos Seal. Hey, you know Nothing. I've never seen anything like it. But it's no zombie. It knows what it wants and won't stop till it gets it. Don't you like that? Nemi? He likes to get in the way. No thanks. He's all yours. It's difficult to get past him, it's just not happening. I promise you're in good hands. I'm with the umbrella biohazard countermeasure service. UBCS was short. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? You guys are the ones who caused all of this. Oh. Yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? You don't have to trust me, but I'm going to the shelter. You coming? Yeah, all right, I'm coming, mate. He likes to play like a Skyrim follower and just block doorways. So, if you saw what I was doing there, aiming down the stairs quickly, just quickly tapping your aim button, you can move down the stairs a little bit faster. It's called stair skating, it's a really helpful trick just to help you get downstairs faster. You don't have to do that, but it does help just get around stairs quicker. Come out of the train, and there's some bullets on the benches right there. And um, in this difficulty, you start with the assault rifle, which also helps you out a little bit get through this. So, we're heading up top. You can skip these dialogues, but... Hang on a second. Let's let these guys finish. Let's start by restoring power. I'll navigate you to the substation once you hit the main road. Copy yeah, that. yeah. Let's do this fast. So you can skip those dialogues like you do with um, cutscenes, but if you do, it actually makes you run longer. You want to listen to them and just keep moving forward whilst you're on the radio. It basically just adds the time of the call to your game time. So just listen to them. It saves you a few seconds. Grab the gunpowders that I did and combine them into handgun bullets and then come out here. And you can shoot the zombie if you want or dodge him. I just like to lure him over a bit and run around him. It's nice and easy. Come into the alleyway, grab these handgun bullets that are on that barrel. There's going to be a zombie on your left and a zombie ahead of you. Shoot this zombie in the leg until his leg snaps and then run past him. And do the same with this guy. Just shoot him in the leg until he goes down. Make it nice and safe for yourself. And then come into the streets. And then ahead of you is a box you can break with the knife more gunpowder there for you if you want to grab that and let's skip the cutscene so right now we're going to get jumped by a few zombies you'll notice there's a barrel on your right and if you shoot that you can take out these zombies easily but i like to leave those to deal with nemesis later on it just makes it easy to take down nemesis and not have to deal with him when he's pursuing you in the streets Take out these zombies by shooting off their legs. Make sure you've got plenty of uh, room to get away from these zombies if they're cornering you. Just avoid them by running away and picking your shots. If they get too close, try and hit that dodge. Like I said before, I try not to use the dodge as much as possible. One thing about the dodge you may not know is that it raises the difficulty adjustment if you get it perfectly. If you don't know what difficulty adjustment is, it basically means the better you're playing, the harder the game will become. And the perfect dodges increase the DA. So, be careful of spamming that too much if you're just trying to make this as easy as possible. Again, we've got more zombies here. Shot that guy's hat off and then went for the leg. You can use the generator on your right if they're getting a little too close. It will help keep them in place. Don't really need to though, you have got plenty of room. The reason I tend to shoot off the legs instead of shooting them in the face just to kill them is because a lot of the time they'll survive on the floor. And then when you come back through here, 
they'll still be here and they'll just get up and start coming after you again. And if you shoot off their legs, they're a lot slower and just easier to get around. Nemesis will appear in this area and it's easier to avoid him if the zombies are all on the floor. So we're going to come up these stairs around the walkway here and into this room and into this area with the safe. The combination here is nine to the right, three to the left and seven to the right. So we can get the red dot sight for the pistol. This makes your pistol a little more accurate. It makes the um, the bloom close faster. Just to the left of that upgrade is some more gunpowder. You can combine the one we got in the streets in that box and make some more handgun bullets. There's a zombie in the back of this room. I'm just going to try and get his leg off. You don't have to finish this guy off. Just make sure he's out of your way so you can get through here nice and safely. Grab the handgun ammo that's right there and then come into this area. Got a little bit turned around here like, do I need anything else here? But I don't, it's fine, we can just continue this way. One thing I wanted to note as well, if you pause the game, your game time won't go up. So if you're like copying me in segments, that's fine, just pause the game and copy what I'm doing or whatever and then watch the rest and so on. Take out this one zombie that's near the stairs of this building with the yellow door. And then come in here and we're going to get the fire hose from this area. Shoot this guy's leg off. Same strategy as we've done before. It's more than likely that that guy will still be alive when we come back later to this area. So again, shooting his leg off just makes it so that he doesn't get in your way. He's nice and easy to take out. And he doesn't do one of those weird shuffles towards you where they like lunge and stuff. So in this area, there's a few zombies to take out. There's more handgun bullets in this corner over here. Grab those bullets. And... I think there's three zombies here. It's up to you what you want to do with them, whether you want to leave them or shoot them. I like to take them out. I added the assault rifle to a shortcut there and then just whipped it out to take these guys out quickly. The assault rifle is really overpowered. We were talking a little bit about damage adjustment a minute ago and hitting your shots also brings up the DA and killing more zombies also brings up the DA. So it will get quite high throughout this run. Uh, but you should be fine, providing you're not dodging every 10 seconds. Grab the gunpowder that's in the donut shop and also those extra bullets that I just grabbed. And then come into this room and grab the um, jewel box that's in the safe room there. And then come back through this side. You see what I'm talking about with these zombies surviving? That one was still alive, just quickly finish them off. Finish any zombies that are still crawling around in this area. Them having their legs shot off will make them nice and easy for you to deal with. Now again, another one here that survived. Finish off any of these that survived and then we're going to come over to this gate, open it up, use the fire hose to put out the fire and then we're going to come into the repair shop, grab the bolt cutters that are on the wall over here and use them on the door right here. So you'll have a cutscene that will cue when you go through this door, skip their cutscene, and just follow Nikolai up the stairs. He does a bit of a disappearing act here, God knows how he got away so fast. Bit of a wizard that man. There's more handgun bullets over here on this body, you want to grab those now rather than on the way back, because on the way back there will be zombies, and we're just going to run past the zombies at the spawn. When you come around this corner there's going to be a couple of dogs for you to take out. They should be quite easy to kill. On this difficulty, like a few handgun bullets at most will take him down. So take out the two dogs and follow the path around heal. I'm going to go and deal with the area with the brain suckers in. And uh, yeah, come through heal. Right, there's three zombies in this room. One will shuffle towards you as you walk in, take off that leg, shoot it in the head. There's one around this corner. Same again. Get rid of that one. When they do that reaching in front of them grab, it's a good uh, indication that they're dead for the moment at least. You can see him sort of reach forward. God knows what was going on with that guy's arm. But once you've taken out those three, head up the stairs. There's some ammo on the desk in front of you. And a hit pouch when you come through the store. Make sure you grab that. We want to get those. Because we can't use the item box, it's really useful to get those hit pouches. Okay. So coming through here, we're going to grab one hub. And this area is where you're allowed to use your one heal because Jill gets infected by the brain suckers. 
uh, we get to use a heal, or we have to use a heal to sort of remedy that. Oh my God. So, let's examine this item we just got off that body. That's the lockpick. We need that to get through this next door. I will be opening all the safes in this run, but uh, I won't be picking all of the locks. I do pick a bunch of them, and you guys can sort of see if you want to open that box or whatever to get what's inside. A lot of the time it's just like health items and stuff. But uh, yeah, once you pick that lock, you'll get infected by the brain sucker, and then just use the herb to uh, make Jill all better, and that's it. We can't use health items for the rest of the run. That's why the achievement is use one or fewer health items, because you need to use that green herb there. Be really careful when you come into this area, <clears throat> because these guys can sneak up on you, and it's kind of RNG. The placements I get of them might not be the placements you get, so just be careful. Look out around every corner. They can crawl across the ceiling as well, so... Just be careful of those guys. Smash this box to get the handgun ammo. We only want to press the one switch that's on that side. So press that one and then come over here through the ladder, down the ladder again. Around this way and we're going to head to the right right here. We've got one of those things on the roof. You managed to get past me. Let's get rid of him. It should only take two shots on this difficulty to kill these guys. And we should have plenty of handgun ammo to help you get through this. If you're running out, just whip out the assault rifle. It's going to make things even easier. I'm pretty sure if you shoot these guys once in the head, they die. I just tried to go for quick body shots because they can sneak up on you so fast. It's just good to get rid of them as fast as you can. Again, just check those corners. There was one above me here that managed to get a slice on me. Let's get rid of him. I'm going to come down here to pull this. There's another one lurking on the ceiling. You really need to be careful of the ones on the roof just because they can infect you again. If you do get infected again in this area, just hit the load. Just quickly go into the menu and load up the quick save. It doesn't matter if you load up. Um, but just, yeah, you don't want to get infected again, basically. Because you can't use another health item now. We've used the one we're allowed. Like I said, if you get infected again, just quickly reload the save. And try this area again. Alright. It's another slash from these guys on the roof. Really annoying. Again, I'm getting quite lucky there, to be honest. Because a lot of the time, the ones on the roof will go for the grab on you. Alright, and then, once you're done there, we're going to head out. Come this way. And back up the stairs the way we came. Okay. All that leaves is the main power switch. Once you come in here, a cutscene. We'll queue. Skip that cutscene. And then head back out. Carlos, it's Jill. I've restored power to the subway. Again, don't skip these dialogues. It should be in the subway company's offices. Unfortunately, all I can tell you is that it's somewhere in the Yeah, yeah, Carlos. You don't even know a building? That's helpful. Thanks, partner. Let's uh crack open these lockers. We've got the lockpick now, there's a gunpowder there. I think these ones have health items in them, but uh, we'll open them anyway. You guys can decide whether you want. Oh no, that one's handgun ammo. Same with the boxes. The ones that I leave have health in them, but sometimes it can randomize what's in the boxes. Most of the time it doesn't, but uh, you guys can always check what I get out of the box and decide whether you want to leave it alone or smash it. Entirely up to you. Alright, so Nemesis is going to burst through here. And what I like to do is whip out the assault rifle. Get ready to dodge if he gets too close. Again, the fights with Nemesis can be a little bit random. And uh, he can get closer to you or lunge or do one of his different attacks. So what I like to do is knock him down once. Wait for him to get back up. I got the dodge on him there. It's a well-timed dodge. Just wait until he comes at you and knock him down twice. Run down here. Luckily, he jumped in front of me there. But if he doesn't, just wait for him to come around the corner. And use that generator to knock him down to the floor. Once you knock him down three times, he'll drop this case. Which has the extended magazine for the pistol we're using. Let's bang that on the pistol. And he should stay down for a little bit now. When he drops that case, he'll stay down for a much longer duration. Giving you an easy opportunity to escape. There's two zombies on your way back, but you can just stick to your right and run right past them. Not until I get traffic control online. 
Okay, so we got some shotgun shells here that we ran past on the way in. I purposely left them for the way back. And we can open up this thing. I'm pretty sure this has a first aid spray in it, which you might not want, so you can leave this one if you want to. But, uh, yeah. I opened it anyway. Let's discard that. I actually just discarded my shotgun shells. That was stupid. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> so when you come through this gate, don't run forward too much, because Nemesis will jump through when you run forward to a certain extent. Wait around here and take out the zombies in this area. Again, I'm leaving that barrel to give me an easy takedown on Nemesis when he shows up. But wait as close to the gate that we just ran through as you can. That way, uh, these zombies can be easily defeated without having to worry about Nemesis. If, Like I said, if you run too far forward here towards the car that that zombie was standing by, Nemesis will jump into the area. Whereas if you just stay here close to this fence and the gate we just ran through, uh, these zombies can easily be picked off without having to worry about Nemesis. It's kind of why I'm just waiting around. This one zombie is usually in the distance. <clears throat> so, just put a shot into him and get him to come towards you. Again, when you run forward here, Nemesis will show up. You might have to get a good dodge on him. He's got those tentacle grabs, which can be annoying. Do your best just to avoid him. Run down here and get to the donut shop. You've got the generator to try and stun him. He was too far away for me there, but whatever, there's not a lot you can really do about that. Try and get him closer, I guess, and then use the generator. The one thing about Nemesis is he can do that big jump and just get in front of you. I came into the donut shop here and used the lockpick because there's a grenade in this locker. We do want this grenade. Ideally, you want to stun Nemesis in the street using the generator and then come in here and get that because he will come into the donut shop. It's kind of annoying. So, I'm going to use the bolt cutters on this gate, although I'm not going to go through here just yet. I'm just going to open it. And uh, there's a couple of zombies in the streets here. But this is why we save these barrels, just to make these experiences with Nemesis nice and easy. So, I did my best to avoid these guys, but Nemesis went for the tentacle grab on me. He's being a tricky little bugger. I came over here, got around the zombies... And when he got close, shot the barrel. That'll stun him up for you, giving you ample time to come and heal. And sort out whatever we need to do in this area. So that zombie's still alive. Remember, we took his leg off earlier, so he's nice and easy to deal with in heal. And we're going to use the bolt cutters on this caged cabinet to get the shotgun. You should have some more shotgun shells than me, although at some point you might have too much stuff in your inventory, you might need to discard some ammo. Also in this room is a lock pickable cabinet. There's a grenade in one of the cabinets that you or the lockers that you'll want to get. Make sure you get that grenade. Another first aid spray we don't want. Let's get rid of that. Okay. So, now that we've done that, we're going to head into the room that's on our right here. Once you come into this area, you will have a conversation with Carlos. Carlos, I'm in the control room. Now what? Nice. Now you got to plot out a room. Okay, give me a sec. And we're going to lockpick open this case. I think there's shotgun shells in here. Yeah, more shotgun shells. Five more. We do end up having a ton of ammo for right, this run. Where are we heading? The train has stopped at Okay. Street. So we want this thing to say on the left side R E F A R A S A F O and the code is one two three two one. I finished him putting the supper room. Chill, you are amazing. Tough as nails too. Hurry back to the station. We'll make sure the subway's ready to depart. If you just copy what I did there, you'll be fine. It's really not a difficult puzzle. You're not in danger in this room anyway. Nemesis won't come in there while you're doing that puzzle, so you'll be good to go. Keep your distance from this zombie. He'll stand up as you come out of that room. You want to shoot these guys in the leg, because if you don't, they're more difficult to hit in their weak spot. When they're on the floor, they're much easier to hit in the head with that parasite thing on their head. They shield their um, weak spot when they're standing up. When you come around this corner, this zombie's going to burst through the door, so we'll just do the whole, the whole shoot in the leg, shoot in the head, get him done. Nemesis won't be in this area. He's waiting on the other side of the donut shop. 
to do the um the cutscene sequence where he's infecting these guys that you might have seen in the demo. So there's another one of those guys to deal with right outside that gate that we unlocked earlier. Let's take him out, come through the gate, and then shoot this zombie that's on the right, get rid of him. He will. If you come into the alleyway here and get into a fight with these three zombies, he'll stand up behind you. So just make sure you deal with that zombie that I shot that was leaning up against the wall. And then you can use the barrel to take out these three zombies by just drawing them out a little bit, you know, and waiting for them to be in the right place. There's some handgun ammo, another grenade, and some shotgun bullets in that case. And then we're on our way back to the donut shop. That's everything we need to do in this area. And again, Nemesis won't be in the donut shop. He'll be on the other side of this door right here. So, I've got to try and deal with the zombie with the parasite on its head. So use the generator to stun Nemesis for a second and do your best to shoot the zombie in the leg to get him on the floor. I got unlucky here and got grabbed by Nemesis. Use the dodge mechanic if you need to to get around him. Just be careful of that zombie that can hit you with his tentacle. He's kind of annoying to get away from. I didn't finish him off. He'll be gone by the next time we get into this area. So at this point, this is where we want to use the barrel to stun Nemesis again. We can get another upgrade for the pistol in this section. So when he gets close, shoot the barrel. And he'll drop the case for you. So, this will give us chance to go into the shops in this area. And grab the other two jewel boxes that are around here. Now that we've got the lockpick and the, um, the bolt cutters, we can come over here, use the bolt cutters to get into this shop. And there's one of the jewel cases. I need to discard the bolt cutters first, though, so that I've got space for it. I'm pretty sure I had to discard the... Um... Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, I'm good. So I combined the two shotgun shells we have. If you've got no space in your inventory, just discard the extra shotgun shells that you have. You should have, like, 20 and then a few extra if you didn't discard the ones by accident that I did earlier. You should have plenty of ammo at this point, but then we're going to come into this shop, lockpick the door open. The other jewel case is just on the side there as you enter. Grab that, leave, shoot this cop in the face a couple of times, and there'll be some handgun ammo in the cop car on your way back. And then we're going to come through this gate that's opposite the shop we were just in. There's a zombie in the alleyway we want to shoot in the leg. When she falls over, just run past her. There's another cop zombie here we want to deal with. Shoot him in the leg, get him to the floor, run past him, all that good stuff. Nemesis might jump in front of you here, so be quick. Try and go for that dodge. Great thing about assisted is, if you do get hit, you can just regenerate your health from danger to caution, so we're all good. And once you get in here and under that shuttle, you'll be able to stay safe. You don't have to worry about anything attacking you. And at this point, we want to examine the jewel boxes, open them up and get the jewels out of them to put into this little puzzle dial the thing. To get some items, we get a grenade, a... I think it's a stock for the shotgun, and a hit pouch as well. And this is why we got all three of these, just to make our life a little bit easier throughout the game. Grenades are pretty important. Um, you don't have to get all three of these, but I just think it pays to get these extra upgrades. Also, there's an achievement for getting all three, so I didn't think it hard to work these in. They're not really that difficult to get, providing you use the strategy I used with the barrels, because in the streets, you end up knocking down Nemesis for so long, you've got plenty of time to go and grab them, you know? So, back into the subway. Skip the cutscenes, and then you're going to have another little section with Nemesis where you just want to run away from him. Keep running. Follow the path around the way I am here. Quick right and a left and another left here. And you'll notice that there's more barrels right in front of us. There's also some handgun bullets on the side there. You might want to grab those. So stand in front of the barrels, like where I am. So Nemesis comes the right way around. When he turns that corner, run away and shoot the barrels to knock him down. That'll buy you enough time to get through the vent. But he also drops another case here. And you can get some shotgun shells. Once he goes down and you grab that case, 
come over here and open up the vent by interacting with it a few times. And we can leave. And we're in the sewers now, nice and easy. We haven't got to deal with Nemesis for a little while. This area is quite short. So let's just keep it moving. This is all cutscene type stuff. You can't skip it though. Carlos, do you copy? Carlos? Oh, shit. Oh. Right, so come into this room. Open up the lockers. There's some ammo and some gunpowder in here, I'm pretty sure, or something. No, shotgun shells and handgun ammo. Grab those, and then we're just going to leave. Nothing else we want in that room. So, once you've done that, let's head this way. There's some more bullets on these barrels ahead of you. Some assault rifle ammo. Down these stairs. And just head immediately left. We need to go and get the battery to open up the door that was ahead of us there. Slide down the slope here. And there's another grenade on your right. I quickly combined the shotgun with the stock that we had and put it on a shortcut as well. It's up to you where you want to put it, wherever you feel is best for you. So, let's grab that extra grenade. It was right there. I actually ran past it, but yeah, it's always there. So when you come down here on the right, you're going to get jumped by a Hunter Gamma. There are several different ways you can deal with these guys. They die instantly from a grenade. You can shoot them in the leg and run past them. We've got plenty of shotgun shots though, so I'm just going to wait for them to open their mouth and shoot them with the shotgun. Make sure you're not getting too close. If you get too close, they can go for the grab and swallow you whole. So just keep your distance. Make it nice and easy on yourself. Three or four shots should kill them with the shotgun. Maybe five sometimes. You don't need to smash that box because it has a hub in it, but the shotgun shells down here that you'll want to grab. And once you're done with that, head back out through the waterfall we just ran under and then head straight down this passageway. Another Hunter Gamma is going to come. Again, make sure you're giving yourself enough distance. If you get too close, they can go for that grab and catch you off guard. Sometimes you'll shoot them point blank in the face and they won't get stunned, which is why I like to keep my distance a little bit from these guys. They are kind of annoying. Just checking my back here to make sure another Gamma isn't sneaking up on me, but we're good. So there's some flame rounds here on the side. Let's grab those. And then we're going to go up this ladder into this room to get the battery. Okay, there's another pickable lock over here. I don't think we want what's in it, but if you go in for the... I think it's the Master of Unlocking achievement. You'll want to get these, although I don't show all of the pickable locks throughout the run. There's a couple of powders in there. There's an explosive powder and a gunpowder. I don't take either of those. If you want to try and take them, if you've maybe got space, you can, but you might end up having to discard them a little bit later. It's entirely up to you. I mean, they're the things that I don't take that you can discard if you do have the room for them, although if you're following me, you probably won't have room for them. If you've got too much ammo at this point, you might want to just discard a small amount of ammo to free up a slot to make sure you've got enough to take the battery. When you come back this way, you're going to have the Hunter Gamma jump out and you're going to have to deal with him. You can go right to another safe room here, but we don't need to. Just head left this way, you're going to get jumped by another Gamma. Be ready to take him out. See how he didn't stun right there? That's what you want to be careful of. If they don't stun, they can go for that grab and it's really difficult to get away from sometimes. So you might want to be ready on the dodge in case that happens. I just prefer to run back. It's a little bit safer. Not as fast, but a little bit safer to do it that way. It just stops you from dying. I mean, One thing I probably should mention is that it doesn't matter if you die. If you're trying to get the achievements through this run, you don't have to do it deathless. I wanted to do the deathless run, but um, if you do die, you just hit the auto save. You won't lose that much time. There's plenty of extra time to work with throughout this run. When you come up here after using the battery, you'll have another Gamma jump in your way. Let's quickly deal with him. Plenty of shotgun ammo knocking about for us to get rid of him. He's done. Let's head to our left once he's dead. Open up this gate. And we're going to go and grab the battery from the door right here. Good stuff. And let's head back this way. Open up the gate. And you don't have to go into this room that I'm about to go into, but there's a, a hip pouch in there. So I like to go in there and grab the hip pouch just to give us that extra space to carry more ammo. I think at this point as well, 
you've maxed out your inventory slots, or maybe there's one more. There might be one more hit pouch somewhere. Um, we need to grab the battery back from this door. There we go. Although we do have a lot more slots now, which is nice. Always good to be carrying those slots. So, just knock that down, head down here, and that's it for this little section with the battery and the hunter gammas. Slap in the battery and head through the door, up the stairs. Trying my best to keep up with what I'm doing. Obviously, we need to move fast throughout this. Another conversation with Carlos. Don't skip it. It saves you a little bit of time just to listen to it and keep moving. Yeah, yeah. And up the ladder. Nemesis is going to grab us. Skip that cutscene and then just run straight forward when you gain control again. Stick to the left here. You don't have to deal with that zombie. He'll just sort of stand there looking at you. And in this room ahead of us is a, I think just an explosive powder. It's up to you if you want to come grab it. Now we've got plenty of space. We've got like five free spaces, or at least I have. You should have a few yourself after getting rid of the battery and getting that extra hit pouch. Can just prove useful to grab those powders sometimes. Although, you know, you can always get rid of them as well. In this area, there's three zombies. You can stick to the left and run past the first two. Try and take off this zombie that's blocking your way. Uh, in the, try and take off his leg, basically. Or you can just stun him and run past him as soon as he stuns. Just keep running. You do want to do that quick, though, because the other zombies might move towards you from behind. So just be quick about it. You should be fine. You should have plenty of time to shoot him in the leg and get past him. If you want to be really quick about it, you can just use a shotgun shell. I was using the pistol to save the shotgun shells. Although you should have plenty extra if you just want to make it easy for yourself and just shoot them with the shotgun. So we're going up the stairs here. Nemesis keeps showing up, but let's just keep following the path we've got ahead of us. Hopping across here. Fire spreads fast in this area. Nemesis is right behind us. Up the stairs. Oh, the ladders. Keep climbing that scaffolding. And then we'll go in left here. Hop in these gaps. Jill will do that automatically. You don't have to press anything. Just as you approach the gaps, she'll just jump over them. Another ladder to go up. And there's some bullets over here on your left. Make sure you don't open the item box here. If you get too close to it, it might accidentally click on that and open it up. And that's going to cancel out that achievement. So make sure you're just picking up the ammo. And then we're going to hop off the scaffolding. We've got a fight with Nemesis here. Flamethrower Nemesis. There's some shotgun shells on the generator right there. There's some explosive rounds for the grenade launcher, which we don't have. You can have it by this point, but I don't pick it up earlier on because it takes up two slots. Um, I just leave it where it is and you get it just before the next nemesis fight. You don't actually need it at this point. So, equip the grenades once you've scavenged up the ammo I did. And chuck a grenade at nemesis and that should get the tank more or less ready to explode. Shooting it a couple more times with the assault rifle. Should get it to explode, as you can see right there. Chuck another grenade at him. And then, after that, there's some more handgun bullets on the... Sort of, uh, the box next to Nemesis. You don't need them, it's up to you if you want to grab them. But once you've chucked those two grenades and blown up the tank, he should only take a couple more shots and he'll, he'll die. You can just skip that cutscene and we'll be done with that fight. That's a really easy fight using grenades. That's why uh, we've saved those grenades for these fights, just to make them easy. Nice and quick. Again, we don't want to skip these dialogues. Don't start. I did what I had to. I know. Thanks. Right. More handgun bullets on the hood of this car. Grab that. Head up the back of this fire truck here and onto the ladder that's on top of it. Follow that along and hop off. You might recognize this area if you played Resident Evil 2 Remake. It's the back of the RPD. When I reached this point, I was kind of worried that we weren't going to get into the uh, RPD in this game. But you do end up going there as Carlos, which is pretty cool. So, come down here and there's a high-grade gunpowder sitting in this case next to the closed door of the parking area. 
So um, let's head back up here the way we came. That's all we need to grab there. And you can run in between these zombies. This one will be standing up and you'll be able to get around it quite easily. And we're going to head to the Kendo Gun Shop. Head in there. And there's an upgrade for the shotgun here, but I don't like to take it because it takes up an extra item slot. You don't really need it, to be honest. Skip the cutscene with Kendo that triggers. Grab the key that's on the wall. And there's more assault rifle ammo on the desk. Grab that. And then we're leaving. When we come through heal, we're going to have to use the key to get through this gate that we just got from the gun shop. Open that up. And you can discard the key once you've opened this gate. It's the only use for it. Let's go ahead discard that. And deal with the zombie that's leaning up against these trash bags. If you run past him when you're trying to deal with this zombie with the parasite on its head, he'll um, stand up. The reach on those things is really annoying, but I managed to take a hit. A lot of the time, this zombie will sort of be walking into the wall around the corner, which is kind of annoying. So do your best to lure him around the corner, take off that leg, and then pop his head when he's on the floor. And there's another one of those guys ahead of you by the door in this area. Do the same again. Shoot him in the leg. Shoot him in the head. Wait till it, his head melts so you know he's dead. And we're going to head upstairs here. Again, you don't have to do this. You don't have to come up here. But one of the lock pickable boxes is in this area. So you might want to come up here and open this up. Get an extra item. Gr explosive rounds for the grenade launcher. Which do come in kind of handy a little bit later. Right. So heading on out. Out of this door. When you get through here, Nemesis is going to pop up and attack you. Chucking flamethrowers about the place. Skip that cutscene. So just run straight forward here. Nemesis should miss his first shot on this difficulty, so you should just be able to keep running. You've got this zombie in your way. It's up to you if you want to try and run past him or shoot one of his legs off. He hasn't got any arms, so he is actually a really easy zombie to get past. So run down that alleyway there, slightly to the right. When Nemesis's beam turns red, you know he's going to fire a rocket, so just be ready. But you should be able to just keep running. If you feel like a rocket is coming towards you, just move out of the way. Again, here you should just be able to run straight forward to the end. And a cutscene will cue. That little segment with Nemesis is done. And we're good to keep moving. Good times. So, we're heading up the ladder right here. <clears throat> nice and easy, down here. So I waited around during this cutscene because I wanted to smash this box, but I'm pretty sure there's just a herb in it. We don't care about heals. So, it's up to you if you want to... I mean, if you're not trying to get the no heals achievement, maybe you can take that, but I don't want it. So, heading this way, down the stairs, and up these stairs, and then the toy uncle head is going to fall off this building and start rolling towards you, just run away from it. And down the stairs, to the right. When it reaches the bottom, you can just run past it, you don't have to wait for it to completely go past you, you can just sort of squeeze past once you've got enough room. Heading up these stairs. You want to go right here. I accidentally took a wrong turn and went left. But you want to go right. I'm going the wrong way. Just kind of stupid of me. If you want to leave, that's fine. Just keep going. If you down Nemesis heal, he will drop you another case. I think with some shotgun shells in it. But uh, I just left. I didn't want to have to deal with him. Because he can be a little bit tricky while he's got that rocket launcher. Entirely up to you though what you want to do if you want those extra shotgun shells. Bear in mind you're probably going to have to use ammo to deal with him. So it kind of doesn't pay off to do that. Actually I think he gives you um flame rounds right there. Carlos, Not shotgun shells. Up to you though what you do. Hey, you saved my ass first. You're a hell of a lot braver than me. So again, we got a little conversation with Carlos. We can get everyone out of the city now. Yeah, you'll be safe. 
So. What about you? From the sound of it, I won't be catching the train. Conversations with Carlos. No, there will be new orders. If it means I can help save the city, it's fine by me. Right. So we're heading down to the bottom, going towards the uh, subway car, and we're going to have a couple of cutscenes, skip up those cutscenes, and then we'll gain control as Carlos. We're already most of the way through this run, or about mm, uh, maybe just past halfway, actually. We've done a good chunk of the run now. So... Skip those cutscenes and you'll gain control of Carlos again. You want to take down Brad here and get the stars card that he drops. Make sure you search his body for that. Come and wait by Tyrell for him to open the door for you. It's open. So, we've got to wait for a conversation here, pretty much. Find him and take him into custody. Take your time. Custody? I thought this was a rescue. There are some bullets on the top right of the RPD. The stars office. But we don't want those. Bard had access to Umbrella's darkest secrets. He knows we'll try to keep him under our thumbs. So this search and rescue mission is really more like find and detain. Yeah. Hmm. Right. Good to know. You can't skip this. I'll open the shutter so you can get through. You stay here and find out what's been going on here at the station. Call you if I find anything. Yeah, you call me if you find anything. Hey! Be careful. Yeah. I will not be careful. So like I said, there's some handgun bullets upstairs on the right side, but uh Carlos's handgun is like a pea shooter compared to Jill's. It's really bad. I tried to use it just to use up the ammo and save assault rifle ammo. It is up to you what you do. But um I like to save as much assault rifle ammo as I can. What the hell was that thing? Once you're done with that cutscene, come through here, through this hallway, back in the RPD, man, and a zombie will shuffle around the corner. Let's take him out. You'll notice that it takes more bullets, usually, to kill these guys. Two more zombies are going to be in this area. Again, just keep taking off their legs. If you're quick about it, you can run past these zombies, but one burst through this door, so I don't know, you, you might want to just play it safe. If you run towards that door and then back up a couple of steps, you can easily avoid that cop zombie that burst through. Big warm RPD welcome. Big warm RPD welcome. There's a flashbang on the desk right here you might want to grab. And then we're going to head through this door. And there's some more bullets on the desk here. T, you copy? There's something real nasty in here. I don't know what it is. Something nasty. All right. I'll take a look with the cameras. Watch your six. So, open up the door. Be careful as you come through this door. Sometimes a zombie can be waiting on the other side of it. I like to move immediately left and take out this zombie first. I got lucky and got a head pop. But just make sure you get his leg off and put a few shots into his face. That should deal with him. First aid spray in that box. We don't want that. I'm going to use the pistol just to try and kill a zombie or two here. The reason I run down here is because a lot of these zombies will stack up on you. And the assault rifle is really OP. So use that to take off their legs. And try to kill as many of them in this area as you can. If you just use the assault rifle, you'll probably have an easier time killing these guys here. But you have to come back through this area a couple of times. And if you've got a bunch of zombies that are in the bit we're standing in now, um, or even if they're down on the floor and they come back to life, they can just get in your way when you've got a fight to liquor later. Um, so come into the West Office here. You oh, use the Stars card on the case right there to get the scope. Combine the scope with the assault rifle. Shoot this zombie in the head that's in uh, the office here. And we can go and open this safe. There's some handgun bullets on the desk. The code for this is 9 to the right, and then 15 to the left, and 7 to the right. And you'll get yourself another hit pouch. Good times. Okay, so let's 
go to the right in this room and there's some more handgun bullets on the desk right here there's a red hub there as well i accidentally picked that up but we don't want that let's discard that stuff get rid of those we don't want those and that's all we need in this room okay so opening up the door there's another zombie around this corner again getting them leg shots get him dealt with nice and easy keep those guns loaded Come to the right here and let's go into the dark room just to open the lockers that are right here there's another red hub but also there's some assault rifle ammo that we want grab that and once you've done that head up the stairs copy that shoot this zombie that's on the floor he will stand up in a little while so you just want to try and get rid of him now he's dealt with and there's a key on the box right here on the left. Let's grab that. The zombie that's on the floor here won't stand up right now. He'll fall off the balcony in a little while. You can't shoot him when he's on the floor either. So just leave him alone. The code for this lock is DCM. Open that up and there's some assault rifle rounds. I think I accidentally picked up the herb there that was on the floor. Let's discard that. And head him back down the stairs now that we've got the, um, the key for the security room. We don't need to go that way just yet. We need to go all the way down. And when you come down here, the liquor's going to spawn when you turn around the corner that's ahead of you. So you might want to use a flashbang like I do just to make sure he doesn't pounce on you. Try to equip it before you turn the corner. I actually forgot about him initially. But using the flashbang just keeps him stunned, gives you extra time to shoot him. And it's less of a chance that he'll end up jumping on you. And there we go. One dead liquor. Use the key on the door on your right as you turn that corner. And we can come into here. There's a zombie on the left side. Use that pistol to get rid of him if you like. I like to use the pistol just to save assault rifle rounds, but it is up to you how you deal with that guy. So we need to put the codes into this console. 104 and 106. I accidentally backed out there. And we can get some more assault rifle rounds and the battery that we need for the detonator grab both of those and let's head out of the room and we're going back the way we came I'm getting a little bit turned around here for a second but we're going back this way yeah where we um, found the key and all that stuff this zombie's going to drop off the balcony don't worry about him just keep running it will take him a good couple of seconds to stand up so you got plenty of time just to run past him and head up here. Conversation with Tyrell. Copy that. So the code for this locker is uh, CAP. I was putting in DCM by accident, but yeah, it's CAP. Open that up. And you've got another flash grenade. And we're going to come over here, grab the detonator. Combine that with the battery. And use it. Cutscene. Skip that. And you've got a bunch of zombies to deal with here. Don't rush into the next room too fast. And also don't back up too much. Because you'll get hit by the steam. I think I ended up getting pushed back quite a bit. Use the, uh, the assault rifle to deal with these guys. You can see I got hit by the steam there. I got grabbed as well. It's kind of unlucky. You might want to spray a bit more than I was. Just to make sure you keep them back a little bit more. I was picking shots probably too more too much. Um, and should have been a little bit more trigger happy. To avoid that grab. But it's okay anyway. I'm still in fine condition. This zombie lunged at me. So I ended up just spraying at her. There's two more around this corner. Be ready for them. One more is going to burst through the door. Spray at him. Get him dealt with. Open up these lockers and you can get a uh, another bit of ammo. There's also a first aid spray which I grabbed by mistake. So equip your flashbang before you run through this door. Throw it at the liquor, get him stunned up. And then spray at him to get rid of him. Get that reload. He's nearly dead, there we go. Nice and easy. More assault rifle ammo in this box for you. And once you've dealt with that. We're going to head into the star's office. 
We'll have a cutscene with Tyrell, skip that. And when you gain control, head to your left, grab the flash grenade, open up this box with the stars card. And there's some more assault rifle rounds in there for you. Nothing else in this room that we want. That's pretty much it for the stars office. Let's discard the card, discard the key. Just to make extra space. And the first aid spray I picked up by accident too. And then we're leaving. Easy stuff. So, we're going to have another cutscene here and back to Jill for a second. Skip that cutscene. And we're going through this door on the left. Crank this open. Right, so this is where we'll get the grenade launcher because we didn't pick it up earlier. Come in. Carlos? Damn it. I guess I'm out of range. So grab the mine rounds. And I think I had to do a bit of management here because I had too much stuff, so I ended up discarding the uh, gunpowder and the explosive powder to grab the grenade launcher. We do need that grenade launcher for this next fight. It makes it way easier. Um, when you come through here, there's going to be a bunch of zombies. Just keep running, and you should be good to run past them all. Uh, I use the assault rifle here to take out these zombies quickly. There's three of them, so just be careful. I only shot two of them down. If you want to shoot down all three or completely take out all three, that's fine also. I was playing it a little bit risky there. I quickly took out two and just ran past the third. It's up to you how you do that. You might want to just take out all three and then run past them. There's some handgun bullets down there on the bench that you saw me just snag. And um, now we can head up these stairs to get on with this boss fight. Skip this cutscene and just keep running. As soon as you gain control, Jill will all automatically drop these cover things onto Nemesis's head. Again, just keep running to the end of this platform. Cutscene will cue, skip that cutscene, and he'll attack you straight away. Just get ready for that dodge. And we're going to use the grenades first. Chuck a grenade at him. We've got two more grenades. Let's get the uh, grenade launcher on a shortcut. And we'll use the flame rounds for now. Flame does a lot of damage to Nemesis. It's like his weakness, apparently. Explosives also do really well. Just do your best to avoid his slam attacks. On this difficulty, he's pretty slow. So you can get past him quite easily. Just try to keep moving. Be ready for him to attack. Go in with those explosive rounds now. Get a few shots on him. After you've hit him enough, he'll start doing this stuff where he runs around. The mine rounds are really useful for this fight. Although, you may not have a lot of them at the moment. There are some more in the area, but you need to blow the doors off the vehicles to get them. But when he's on the buildings, hit him with a mine round. And then shoot him in the exposed parasite sticking out of his chest. I was using the shotgun. And then I went into the menu and equipped the assault rifle. So it'd be a little bit quicker and I wouldn't waste time. And I could hit him with a few more shots. Okay, so... Using those explosive rounds, switching that ammo. If he doesn't go into the running animation... And you want to just shoot it with whatever ex explosives you have. But save the mine rounds. I've only got two here. You might have a couple more. But just try to save those mine rounds for when he stops on the buildings. You can cut him off with them. Like if he's running around like that. You can put a mine round down and hope he runs into it. But um, I like to save him just until he's stationary. Just makes it a little bit easier. Again shooting him in the parasite with the shotgun. He stood back up there. He's pretty close to dying at this point already, although I haven't got any mine rounds left. And there are more mine rounds in the police cars you can see ahead of me. I think it's in the one on the right, and also the van that's on the left of those police cars. But you need to blow the doors off the, uh, off the cars to be able to get them. So at this point, I was running around trying to find more 
explosive rounds. Yeah, that in that car right there, and also the van on the left, there's more mine rounds, but the doors haven't been blown off, so there wasn't really anything I could do. I didn't want to waste any ammo, so I just sort of shot him a couple of times to do a bit of damage to him. If you use a mine round, you can knock him down again, and by the third time you've knocked him down and shot him in the parasite, it should end the fight. But um, I hit him with the rest of the explosive rounds just to do more damage. He doesn't have to have the, the parasite exposed to do damage, but that last grenade got him killed. It's good stuff. You can see where the mine round, rounds are now. Before you leave this area, get to searching because there's plenty of ammo around here, specifically shotgun ammo. So make sure you just run around, smash the boxes and look on the crates that are around you for ammo. You will end up leaving this area with like 30 shotgun rounds or something, which come in super handy for the end of the game. So just run around, scavenge up that ammo and then we can leave. Great thing about this boss fight is at the end you can pick up all the ammo that you've missed. A couple of the other boss fights with Nemesis, you don't get the chance to do that, even though there is shotgun ammo in the area when you're fighting him. So right now I was kind of thinking about what I should be discarding here. I was pretty unsure about what to discard. I had, um, I think, a few shotgun shells spare. I've got 40 and then, like, a few extra. But my shotgun was empty, so I decided to reload the shotgun. Um... And I was really hoping that it would use those few extra, which I think it did. And then I only had two, so I discarded those two. That way I can take the flame rounds, get those handgun ammo as well, and um, leave. That's it. We got all the ammo here now. We can just head off. We'll have another cutscene. Q skip that cutscene. And then we'll... I think there's... Is there another cutscene here? Yeah, another cutscene. Skip that bad boy. And then we'll take control of Carlos in the hospital so we gotta deal with this section now we got some handgun bullets on the side that you'll want to grab and then we can leave the sick bay more bullets on the desk right here grab those and then we're gonna go through this door right here keep moving forward when you come through here there's going to be a few zombies lurking around i use the handgun to deal with as many of them as possible take out those legs shoot them in the face when they're down you have got to come back through this area a couple of times and taking them down like this just makes it nice and easy keep repeating myself i know i sound like a broken record but uh it pays to do this. I feel like it's the safest strategy. Again, you can use Carlos's dodge mechanic, which is the punch. Which is really powerful, but it's just so much safer to do this. Definitely takes a, a bit longer to do it this way. It's just extra safe, which is kind of how I want to do this guide. Just so everybody can follow it without having to get that perfect timing on the dodge. Um, some people might find it easy to do the dodge. You're free to do whatever you want. The problem is with that, sometimes they'll survive when you come back and they'll stand up and just having zombies lurking around is just annoying, whereas if you shot their legs off, you'll be good to go. Grab the tape recorder in that room and then head through this door. More zombies to deal with. Shooting off them legs. Shooting them in the face. Nice and easy. There's a zombie on the gurney to your left here. You want to bait her to jump off just by running close and then running away. And there's some handgun ammo in that box. Sometimes it will be a herb. That's one of the few boxes that's actually random. But it'll either be handgun ammo or a herb. You might want to check though. If you don't deal with that zombie, she'll jump on you later when you approach that door. So heading through the door I did there and then immediately right up the stairs. Up here and then into this door. It's pretty much the only way you can go. Deal with this zombie that's on the floor. And then come through here and through these double doors and we're going to head immediately to our left just to get some extra ammo for the assault rifle in the staff room which is right there and then we can leave this room and just head back the way we came we're going to swing a left heel and swing a right to jump through the window here just so we can come down and before you jump over this bench go to your right and grab the upgrade for the assault rifle it's a grip Grab that, it gives you less recoil on it. And hop over the bench now, grab the key that's on the floor. Good stuff. 
and then back through the broken window here we got some more assault rifle ammo on the garney right there and then open up this door through that door and we're heading back up the stairs again now that we've got this key let's keep going once you've done that head to your left through these double doors again the zombie is down don't have to worry about him through here through these double doors and then we're gonna head uh, to our left I think it's to our yeah we gotta head this way I almost took a wrong turn there I think I'm getting turned around yeah there we go <laughs> it is this way it is to your left and through these double doors to go and open the door that's in this room get this sorted out there's some uh, assault rifle ammo on the desk to your right right there let's open up this door and there's a few lockers in this area you can open I think you get a flashbang out of one of them that's all you get out of those a zombie will fall out of one of these lockers but then you will get the key card we can discard the key now we've got the only use out of it none of these zombies will stand up here so you'll be fine just to leave and continue back the way you came okay so skipping this cutscene and then we've got the first hunter to deal with shoot him in the face as much as you can be quick you don't want these guys to get close to you they do mega damage and can also one hit kill you on any difficulty so just be quick about killing them and then we're gonna head around here to our left and we need to go and use the key card um, in this room we can also open the safe here and the combination is nine to the right and then three to the left and that's it it's only two digits unlike the others which are usually three we'll get another upgrade for the assault rifle here which is the dual magazines slap that onto the assault rifle for good times and then head over here towards the key card reader use the key card and we can combine the two stacks of ammo that we've got before you head through that door deal with the zombies that are in this area again i'm just trying to use the handgun ammo just to make my life easy i was getting a bit close to this zombie so i whipped out the assault rifle make sure you're dealing with them get them done with make sure they're dead for the moment at least take off their legs get rid of them a bunch of zombies will come through these doors and there's nothing important in this room there's just a grenade no key items but just a grenade watch out for the zombie that stands up in this room i just left her there because we don't have to come back to this room so i just ran away and thought i'd rather save the ammo it's up to you if you want to kill her but i was just trying to save some ammo you know so there's two hunters on the right as you can see through the glass we've got to deal with them in a second but first we've got two zombies in this room one will be walking towards you as soon as you enter get rid of her Leg shots, head shots, hopefully you know the drill by now. When they do that reaching in front of them animation, you know they're dead. There we go. Okay, so I don't think there's anything in here we want to grab. Um, unlock this door for now. We're going to run through that in a minute. So my strategy here to deal with these hunters is to try and just use the um, flashbang. But open the door, chuck the flashbang in. Do your best to run back through the door, get them stunned, and then chuck the one grenade we have in there. Manage to hit a sneaky slash on me, which is annoying. They can burst through the door, so just be ready. Because, they, like I said, they can one-hit kill you. I was doing my best to open the door, hit some shots, and back up. Just so, that I, so that I didn't get killed. There's that one bursting through the door, which is kind of annoying. Here's the other one. I'm pretty sure this one got a hit on me. They move so quick. It can be difficult to avoid. Yeah, look at that. Hunters do look great, though. Alright, he's dealt with... Let's grab the assault rifle ammo that's on this desk right here, and then the tape that is on the further bedside table type deal. Combine that with the tape recorder, and that key item is complete. We're going to use that on the door pretty much where we started. So we're going to head back through this door, when you do, when you turn the next corner, grab first of all, grab these assault rifle ammo, but a hunter is going to jump out on you. You can fight him, but if you just jump through the window on your left, you don't have to fight him. It just keeps you a little bit safer. He won't follow you down. And uh, yeah, it just makes your life a tad easier in this run. Save you some ammo and stuff. So now we're just heading back the way we came. Let's head to our right through these double doors. 
And these zombies are going to break through the glass now. We've got to deal with them. If you run to the left and open up the door, you can get some grenades in the next room and just deal with these zombies with the grenades, but I chose to stand here and fight them. I still took a grab, which is annoying, but if that happens to you, you should be fine. So, shoot some legs off, shoot some heads, and then use the key card on the door, and that should be all of the uses. I just discarded my extra ammo. I've done that twice in this run. I didn't even realize that during the run. It's because I'm, I'm moving too quick. Make sure you discard in the right thing. I just discarded like a bunch of ammo that I shouldn't have. You can tell I'm definitely rushing and not paying too much attention. Stupid moves, man. Stupid moves. Careless moves, but... Even though I did that, I still had plenty of ammo to get through the run. I was just being dumb. So, let's grab the handgun ammo and head back the way we came. There's a green hub there, we don't want that. Let's use the tape recorder. All I wanted to know was what the documents were doing in your office in the first place. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm goddamn Nathaniel Bard. I'm the best file. Right, so a short while into that conversation, you can run in here. But yeah, man, make sure you're not discarding your assault rifle ammo like I did. That was a dumb move. Bard. Tyrell. Bard's dead. That's what you get when you're rushing yourself. So, grab yourself the ammo. And then head to this computer. Skip the cutscene that you get here. And then through this door, grab the vaccine out of this cabinet. There we go. All right, Joe. Hang tight. Good stuff. And we're heading back the way we came. I got it. Good. I'm headed your way. Be careful. Careful? <laughs> Have you seen this town? It'll be a fucking miracle if I get there in one piece. Right. Deal with this hunter. It's going to drop through into the room. Try and go for headshots. They do do more damage. All right, he's done with. Adam, my frame heart. Hope you and chat are doing well. I frame heart much. <laughs> There's a love to you all. Text to speech coming through there. Because this run was taken from stream. That might have just confused some of you that I didn't think that was going to come through. But yeah, text to speech from my chat. Let's uh, take down this guy. Get rid of him. By the way, if you want to tune into the streams, come on over to twitch.tv slash iframes. Little bit of a plug there, mate. So now we got to head back this way and use the vaccination on Jill to heal her up. And we're going to have a bit of a COD Zombies moment as Carlos. Let's head this way, skip that cutscene. Grab the ammo that's in front of you straight away and then run back towards the door. And then uh, over here to grab some more ammo. Yeah, back to the door now. So, I'm standing by this door, using the handgun ammo that we've got. We have got a ton of it. you got plenty of time to shoot these guys, just make sure none of the zombies are getting too close. Good thing about this section is, uh, you can tell when the zombies die, because their bodies just explode. So just shoot them in the face. A few shots will take them out. Making your life nice and easy. Just hold the zombies back. When you've got a second, come over here and grab the detonator. Just hang out. Shoot him in the face. Just play it safe. Use up these handgun ammo. If anything gets too hectic, gets too close, just whip out the assault rifle and go ham on these zombies. Make your life a lot easier. Just wait. Okay. You can also shoot the zombies as they're falling through the window and that'll get them killed nice and easy. This is just one of those seg sections where you've just got to play it out and get things done. Again, not too difficult, but just playing it safe, man. 
I'm not sure if this section is timed or it's related to how many zombies you kill. I honestly don't know. Let's just pop him in the face. Right, when the lights go out, a hunter's gonna burst through this door, so be ready for that. Stay on the other side of the desk, and that way you just give yourself a bit more breathing room. I got a little bit brave here and got too close to the door, but if you stay on the other side of the desk, you'll just be uh, safer, because he'll have to run all the way around to get to you, giving you time to shoot him in the face, you know? So, you've got to turn the light back on there. You'll also have just zombies bursting in. Pretty sure I just left the light off. It's up to you if you want to turn it back on. You've pretty much just got to shoot zombies. I think it's more fun to kill them in the dark, but... Do what you like. Up to you. As long as you're staying safe and you feel like you can do it, that's all that matters, right? This really reminds me of that, um... DLC for Resident Evil 2 Remake. The No Way Out DLC that I did no damage. Although that's a lot more hectic than this. You're in much more of a tight situation <laughs> doing that. So I haven't even touched my assault rifle yet. I think I used it on the Hunter, right? But for the normal zombies, I've just been using my handgun because we had so much ammo for it. Uh, I have to switch over soon. And there we go, we're out. We've still got like 300 ammo for the assault rifle, so that's more than we're going to need. Having that upgrade for the um, the scope the little red dot thing makes this fight so much easier with the assault rifle just because your bloom is so tight All right she's done for a few shots in the leg took that one out easy so shortly a hunter's gonna jump through the window so be ready for that it will be a little while after Tyrell says almost got it which came in not so long ago so just be ready for the hunt talk there he is again we're going to use that desk to our advantage keep shooting him in the face i think he's done for now you can use a grenade if you like because we have got a few grenades at this point if you want to make it nice and easy just chuck a grenade at the hunter we're almost there though very close Shooting them tentacle parasite zombies in the face, obviously. There we go. So, when these zombies stack up, equip the grenades. Chuck a grenade. Boom. Monster kill. Let's grab the, uh, C uh, the detonator and slap it on the C4. Now that that's done, we just need to last 30 seconds. I'm pretty sure you could just run to the back of the room and stand there if you wanted to at this point, but we've still got grenades, so why not use some grenades? I'm, I think if you just stood here, you'd be absolutely fine. But this is the last section as Carlos. We might as well use the grenades we've got. There's no reason to save them. So if anything gets too close or gets too near that door, just chuck a grenade over there. And there you go, done. Skip that cutscene. And we'll have a little dialogue here with T. You alright? Not even close. But at least it's over. But at least it's I'm over. Really not a lot left of the run now. So, skipping these cutscenes, and then we will get control of Jill again. Let's go. So we've got some pickups on the table here. There is another pistol, but we don't want to take that pistol. It is better than the one we have, more or less, but uh, I'm going to keep the upgraded pistol because it would just take up an extra inventory slot. So in the hospital, there are things for you to use your lock pick on if you're trying to get that achievement for picking all of the locks. I'm not going to get those, and if you're going for time, I'd recommend not doing it either because it just wastes time. Also, the Magnum is in the hospital, but there's really not much of a use to go and get the Magnum. You don't need it. This is like the easiest difficulty, so it, it doesn't matter. You really don't need to go and grab it. So let's just continue. Pick that one lock that was on our right in the hospital and then head down these stairs to get down here into the nest 2 area we need to head to this lift 
and pull the switch that's on this platform to get it done. Literally approaching the end of the game now. Good times. So, hopefully some of you are finding this guide helpful. I know these routes really don't take me too long to figure out, but like I've mentioned before, I like to make these guides for everyone to follow. I, I can speedrun the game and I can learn speedruns. I did it with Resident Evil 2, it's fun to speedrun. But a lot of uh, a lot of speedruns come down to RNG, right? Like you have to get lucky and sometimes you'll mess up and I kind of want to eliminate as much of that as possible from these guides as I can just so they're nice and easy for people to follow and you won't really struggle too much, you know? There's another hit pouch in this room. Make sure you grab that. That will get you the maximum capacity in your inventory which should get you an achievement if you haven't already got it and we're gonna head through this door and then jump down this platform right here and head towards the elevator in the back but yeah if any of you are interested in watching me speedrun come on over to twitch man i speedrun games on twitch a lot also when i'm doing these guides like doing practice for these guides and stuff like that i'll do them on twitch so we're going to hit that pay your head with a mine round. He'll fall off, allowing us to pull the switch without him grabbing us, and then we can shotgun him in the face. When you see the smoke stop coming off them, that's a good indication that they're dead. When you shoot them once, you'll see them sort of start smoking, and they'll move a lot slower when they do, when they do that. So uh, when you see that stop, usually it means that they're dead if they're not moving. All right, grab the first fuse there, and then we're going to head down this ladder. When you come down here, you're going to get jumped by a couple of dogs, so be ready for the doggos. Shoot them. Get rid of them. And we got some bullets there on the side. I almost ran past them. I needed to go back and grab them. Okay, and then follow this path around. You'll have a zombie chilling on his own over here. Let's take him down. And then we're going to squeeze through this. Yeah, like I said, Come on over to Twitch if you like. I'll pin my channel link underneath this video. But it's the same name on there as it is on here. Twitch.tv slash iframes. I speedrun and play games very regularly. Usually I'll play the game on stream. If it's a guide type deal, I'll try and work it out to the best of my ability by doing a few playthroughs. And then record it and just come back and commentate over it. But if it's just like a casual playthrough, a lot of the time... I'll just take what I'm doing on Twitch and then put that on YouTube. It doesn't hurt to do that. I do have a pretty supportive community, which I'm very, very thankful for. Although it's actually really tough to get people to come over from YouTube to Twitch. It's actually difficult. So I tried to... I know I sound like a broken record repeating myself about my Twitch. Some of you probably heard it a few times, but... Yeah, it's kind of the best way to get people to come over is just... Repetition, man. Right, so when you come down here, this ladder, there's some zombies in this uh, container. Shoot a mine round into the back to kill them. I had to discard something here, so I discarded the um, high-grade gunpowder. When you come back, a Hunter Gamma is going to burst out of this container. Go to the ladder and just run up it. You should have plenty of time, and he'll try and grab you while you're on the ladder but because you're on the ladder he, he won't be able to that animation will register because you've uh, you're basically invincible while you're on the ladder which is nice so heading back the way we came and we're gonna head back across this platform that we just came up a second ago and into this room there's a pale head and a couple of zombies grab out the shotgun to take out these guys nice and quick you see the smoke coming off in there because we hit him with a shell after hitting the other one that really slows them down, but once you see that stop, it means they're dead. More shotgun shells there if you need them. Let's open up this door right here, and we're going to come through here, go down this ladder, and there's going to be a hunter in the back of this area, so be ready for the hunter. I use the assault rifle to take him out usually. He fell over right away, which is nice. The hunter here will sometimes do some weird shit where it like, jumps off the wall, so be careful of that, but... And here we go, he's done for. Let's try for headshots. Try for headshots. Grab yourself this last fuse. I needed to discard something here, so I ended up discarding these explosive rounds. I didn't have enough space. So I uh, discarded that, grabbed the fuse. All right, here goes. 
and then headed off this way back the way we came up this ladder through here and back over to um, where we came from it's like an immediate left through that door we ran through through this door and uh, down that platform run past these zombies use the fuses on the fuse box get them used beautiful and then just press the button and you'll be off don't worry about fighting them you might take a hit but uh, they're easy enough to get past if you just run straight past them uh, interact with the console right ahead of you a cutscene will play skip that cutscene and then we're heading towards the door over here okay so we're waiting for our boy T to open the door here there we go so Jill can't run in this section but he does if you use the dodge you can keep up with him so I like to just spam dodge in this area I got your back. All right, let's get this done. Let's get it done. For some reason here, the door didn't get opened. Like I was standing here waiting for this to go down. I think it's because I was too far forward. You might want to step back so that it registers. I think like it's waiting for a trigger or something. Yeah, there we go. So now that we're in Nest Two, we're gonna immediately head forward and left through this door. And at the end of this corridor is a set of stairs on the right we want to go up those heading up and to your right again keep going forward and we want to go through this door that is on our left and then right again once you get in here to go and interact with this console and get the usb stick that we need skip that cutscene get that stick and there are some boxes and ammo crates and stuff you can get in this area but i decided to screw it because i've got plenty of ammo it honestly doesn't matter at this point i wouldn't worry too much about getting extra ammo and shit so let's head off we're going this way left when you come down the stairs we're going to use the stick on this door here that has the red console Override. open it up and bunch of zombies and pay your heads in this room be ready for them one of them is crawling, there's also one of these stairs we need to go up here, so come up the stairs straight away, shoot this guy in the face, when he sort of stuns up, when you get past him, shoot him again with the shotgun. Don't worry about the rest, just come into this room, interact with the console, get yourself this first part of the vaccine that we need. Get it done. Here we go, there's a zombie in this room that will stand up when you pick it up, but don't worry about her too much. If you want to kill her, that's fine. You should have plenty of shotgun ammo, but I just tend to get rid of her. Use a mine round to blow up these pale heads. I had to load them in, which takes forever. There we go. That'll get them stunned, allowing you to run past. They might not die, so just be ready to deal with them if you need to. I shot this one again in the back of the head. Shot this one, killed a couple of those. And uh, I think there's one more here, maybe? Oh no, we're good. More shotgun shells there as you run past as well. Doesn't hurt to grab that. There's another box over here on the right if you want to open it and take a look. Some acid rounds. Actually, yeah, make sure you grab those. They're really useful for dealing with the hunters on the way back. So make sure you grab those acid rounds. Very, very useful to pick up. So... Now, we're going to head over here and interact with the switch, deal with this zombie first. He stands up when you get close to him. So take him out, push this switch in to open the door that's behind us. Now that that's done, there's another case right here. I don't think it's anything we've won though yet. It's a first aid spray. Ignore that case if you don't want heals during this run. Okay, so interact with the console head back the way we came and get those acid rounds ready because you're gonna have to deal with two hunters on the way back so load them into the grenade launcher although we're probably gonna need to use the assault rifle to deal with the bunch of zombies in this next area so make sure you switch to that in just a second what's in this case more assault rifle rounds let's go so let's switch it up to that assault rifle be ready for all of these guys. They will lurk out of the room. 
once you come in. Payo head as well. I like to use the shotgun for the payo heads. Kills them nice and quick. Watch out for these parasite dickheads. They are annoying. Get that spam on. Alright, so come and heal. This zombie's gonna stand up as you enter, but don't worry about her. Just interact with the draw. Grab the vaccine, combine it with the part of it you've already got. That will give you the mixing agent that you need to go and um, use in the machine in the room that we got the USB stick in. So now that that's done, head back down the elevator we just used. And now we want to make sure we've got the grenade launcher out. Because we're going to get attacked by these two hunters. Make sure you've got the acid rounds in the grenade launcher. As soon as they jump out, hit them with the acid rounds. It stuns them up a lot. You might want to use them all. They should just die off one each, but I hit them with two just for good measure. And that makes short work of the hunters. Very easy little fight there. So up the stairs when you get through this door. When we get back into this next room, look out for any pale heads or zombies that have survived. Um, they'll be lurking towards you. Get ready with a shotgun to shoot them in the face and just deal with them. If you stun the pale heads, it gives you plenty of time to get past them. But this one managed to get the grab on me, which is annoying. But now that he's on the floor, I can just run past him. So let's go. Heading back the way we came, up these stairs. Almost took a wrong turn there. So, once we get up here, we're going into the room that's ahead of us here on our left. And go into this machine that's straight ahead of us. So, use that mixture that you've got. Get it in. That vaccine base. And the combination here is mid, high, low. And that'll get it done. Skip them cutscenes. Grab yourself that vaccine. And when you gain control after skipping them cutscenes, head to the vent that's right ahead of you. And when you get through this vent, you'll have another cutscene in the place. And when you skip that, you'll just need to hold forward right here. Nothing else, just forward. This takes a second, but more cutscenes to skip and now we're gonna have a boss fight with nemesis so right here i discarded the lock pick we don't need that anymore and discarded the um, acid rounds as well i don't think i'm gonna need the acid rounds, so it's up to you if you want to discard them i think i actually kept them here but i've only got one it might be worth just discarding those and picking up the flame rounds or the explosive rounds that are on the table right there okay so we have another fight with Nemesis coming up. We're going to get ready for that. Be ready with the flame rounds for the grenade launcher. Again, you might want to wait for him to do that slam attack and just avoid it. I chucked a grenade at him here. Grenades do big damage to Nemesis during these fights, so they're really useful to use. I got the flame rounds. You might want to use the menu to equip stuff because it's a little bit quicker. And you can sort of pause time whilst you do that. Although, although you can also use the shortcuts. So a few flame rounds will activate the cutscene with Carlos. Once you've done that, hit him with another flame round if you like. He was actually down here, I think, and I didn't realize. Get rid of that acid round as well, why not, right? So I've got the mine rounds on now, ready to hit him with when he goes to the floor. When Carlos says that you've got company, zombies spawn in the area, so be ready for that. Once you shoot the uh, switches to knock down Nemesis. You might want to use the mine rounds on the Parasite when he's on the floor. There's a lot of damage to him. Use the assault rifle to deal with any zombies that are hanging around. I managed to take a bite there. Be careful of those zombies, man. They are very annoying. So, Nemesis is doing his running deal. Here comes some more. So again, on the second time around, Carlo should do the whole thing where he smashes like a mechanical arm onto him. Still works. 
use the assault rifle to deal with any zombies that are hanging around coming towards you. I didn't get to hit Nemesis with anything there, but whatever. Not a fat lot I can do about that. Hit a Nemesis with the mine rounds. They do a lot of damage to him. This is really the only fight when you need special ammo. So it's worth using the special ammo for this fight. Just hit him with whatever you can. You'll only really need pistol ammo for the next fight, or maybe the assault rifle. It's up to you. And we have got a bunch of ammo at this point. So, Carlos gives you that warning. Try to take out the zombies. Nemesis hit me with a big belly flop here, which is kind of annoying. You might want to be ready for those dodges. You can see my screen is a bit paler here, which means I'm in danger. Which is kind of scary. But I managed to get through it without dying. On this difficulty though, Jill does heal up back to caution after a while. You can see the colour sort of come back into my screen. So we can still take another hit now. Just keep hitting him with whatever you can. Eventually he'll do that whole running around crap. Deal with these zombies. Number two. There he is. Surprise, asshole. And when he goes down, run over, hit him with the explosive rounds. There we go, he's done. Again, just use your special ammo for that fight. It really pays off to do that. We've picked up a bunch throughout this run. There's uh, one more fight left in the game, although it's a really easy one. This fight is not difficult at all. So at this point, we've more or less completed the run. Okay, so... As soon as you start out, turn around, head over to the big giant laser gun thing over here, or the rail gun, whatever you want to call it, and fire a shot at Nemesis with that. And then we've got to pop a couple of his little pods to be able to use another shot. So it will have two boils, one on the left and one on the right. Use the pistol to pop them. Watch out for his big arms. I think he did manage to hit me once here, but once you pop them both, he'll go down. And then you want to use that opportunity to push these switches in. You can do this in one cycle, in the sense of you can push the down Nemesis and then push all three switches in so that you've got enough time to get the second uh, attack on him and get him killed. But I just went for another cycle just to make it nice and safe and nice and easy. I think he did hit me once during this fight. This put me in danger, but it's fine. If you die anyway, you can just load it and do the fight again. If you've kept up with me throughout the run, you've got like a whole half an hour spare, so you can afford a good few mistakes to get these achievements. There was the hit. I dodged too early, which was stupid. Right, so he's going to go down again after popping that third boil. Head over to that switch at the back, press that shit. And if you dodge towards it, you can save yourself a little bit of time if you're in danger, because you do move slower when you're in danger. Push that final switch in once that's done, head towards the railgun. Use that thing, and then we're done. I was dodging towards it here to be a little bit quicker. So you'll have to walk towards Nemi after this shot. Fire that shot, do some big boy damage. And just walk towards him. Press the final button after Jill jams it in his mouth. Boom! That's what I'm talking about. And now that that's done, let's head into the Nemesis body and to the right. Nemesis is done with. And, uh, yeah, we're leaving. We just gotta jump up this ladder, through this door, straight ahead. To get through this door. And... Keep going, keep going, towards the lift. You don't have to press the button here, I, I thought we had to, but you don't. You can, it literally just opens for you. And we press the button inside the elevator to go up. And up we go. 
almost there. Very, very close to getting this done. Skip that cutscene, shoot Nikolai in the chest, done. GG's all round. So, let's take a, a look at our final time here. Skip all these cutscenes. Alright, 1 hour 31. I mean, definitely could be done a little bit faster, even though I made a couple of mistakes, like discarding some ammo when I didn't need to and stuff like that. We still had so much ammo by the end. This really isn't uh, that difficult, but... Hopefully it's been easy for you guys to follow. I like to make these guides uh, as easy as possible to follow. You'll get the S rank as well, which will get you the um, the S rank achievement. There is an achievement tied to beating the game on, on on Inferno with an S rank, which I would like. I would like to do a guide for. Um, so look out for those in the near future. I know a lot of you guys have used my. Uh, guides in the past for the previous Resident Evil games and a lot of you say they're really useful so I hope this one has been just as useful and has helped you get a few of the achievements here this game is shorter at least achievement wise the achievement is for doing it under 2 hours where in the past we had Resident Evil with Resident Evil 7 which was uh, I think 3 hours and Resident Evil 2 was just under 14,000 steps or something like that this one's a little bit different but there we go. Hopefully that's got you all the achievements. Getting through without using um, any extra healing items. You do have to use one in that scripted area of the game. Without using the item bucks. And under two hours. Let me know if you got your achievements or trophies. If you're on PlayStation for using this guide. I always like to, to read about success stories. Thank you all very much for watching. If you uh, would like to join the future live streams come on over to twitch.tv slash iframes quick self plug there i'd appreciate seeing some of you uh check that out and i look forward to chatting with some of you much love everyone have a great day and until next time take it easy